And then a week later, as we all know, on Thomas Sunday, uh, his, his saving doubt was fulfilled. And he indeed was bidden by the Lord to put his hand into his side, into his finger into the print of the nails. And he, and he fell down and said, my Lord and my God. And he was enlightened at that moment. His spiritual understanding was enlightened so that he could see that Jesus Christ was not just uh, a man. He was not just a res- he was certainly not just a resuscitated corpse, but that he was the living God, risen from the dead in their midst, and that through him and from him came this sanctification of all things. We read also today about the the son of the widow of Nain being raised from the dead by Jesus. Certainly one of his greatest miracles. If you read your homework that Father Victor so diligently sends out, um, the article was about the compassion of Christ. And certainly, Certainly that is, that is a very important aspect, that uh, Jesus had compassion on the widow who was left completely destitute and without support by the death of her only son. Uh, he had compassion on people who, uh, uh, who came to him in their need and in their sorrow and in their poverty. But the most important thing is that he had compassion on humanity itself, on all of us, who were lost in sin, who were lost in, under the power of sin, and who, were, and who were mortal, who had died. Because really what the theme of, of these gospel readings is today is that, the, is that the good news of Jesus Christ is that Jesus has victory over death itself. Jesus has conquered death. He raised the... the the son of the widow of Nain, he he himself was raised by the Father uh, so that he could lead us into everlasting life. He raises us from the dead so that that we can participate uh, in his eternal life. There's lots of ideas about what the gospel is. But this is the core of it that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and that he has victory over death. And therefore, there's no reason for us to sin because sin, the power of sin is death. And what is, and what is the power behind sin but the fear of death? Ultimately, we sin because we fear death. And Jesus has overcome death. He's destroyed it. He's, he's conquered it. He's trampled it down. So that we might live in this world without sin and in the world to come, participating in his everlasting life, in his eternity, in in fact, in his very person, in his his deity, which he shares with us and he glorifies us as he raises us up from the dead. There's so, so much of the world wants to, wants to uh, tell us that all of this is, this is craziness and there's no, there's no greater stumbling block uh, and folly so far as the world goes than that, that Christians believe not only that Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, but that, the, that we will all be raised from the dead. It's utterly incomprehensible to us in our rational mindset. There's no scientific explanation. There's no possible rational understanding of it. And yet we know intuitively in the depths of our heart because the Holy Spirit has come to us and has illumined our hearts and given us that living experience of faith, which is that sure knowledge that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and that we too will be raised in him and will rise in him. And that his resurrection is already manifest in our life. 
Because what is the life of the church but Jesus, the life of Jesus who is risen from the dead, giving us uh, participation in his grace, a participation in his activity, a participation in his will, and a foretaste of that heavenly kingdom. You can't help but come into a, into a holy temple like this and know that you've stepped out of the world and stepped into the kingdom of God, right? You experience the grace of God in this, in this holy place and are transformed by it. What is that transformation? First, we, first it shows us our sins. We come into, we come into confrontation with our sins. But, uh, and so what do we do? We repent, we, we confess our sins and are freed from our sins. Because what, what is that other aspect of the gospel? That Jesus is, liberates us, he frees us from our sins by forgiving us. By forgiving us. And what, when really, what, could, what is better for us in this world than the forgiveness of our sins? How many of us are tortured by our conscience? How many of us have, have regrets and resentments and all of these things which, which burden us and which, and which sadden us and which, and which uh, keep us from ascending into that into uh, spiritual, spiritual realm? Because as long as we hold on to these things, as long as we hold on to... Uh, to resentment, as long as we hold on to bitterness, as long as we hold on uh, to anything against anyone else, anything against ourselves, or even against God. Because sometimes, and how often, do we blame God for, for the tough things in our life, right? Does it make sense? And so Christ frees us from that. And he liberally gives his forgiveness. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is ask. And that forgiveness brings the healing of our soul, the healing of our lives, not only so that we can be happy in this life, but so that we can experience eternal life uh, beginning here and now and in, a, in an unbroken Continuity, unbroken by death itself, unto all eternity. So, brothers and sisters, as we as we remember Saint Thomas today, the great missionary who uh, ended up in India and uh, founded communities that are thriving to this day. Uh, just go up into Silver Spring and just have at least two or three Indian Orthodox churches. That's, those are the communities that St. the Apostle Thomas founded. And who, are, who remain faithful Orthodox Christians, even till now. The fruit of his work has borne out the integrity of his message. Let us give thanks to God for him and for his missionary work that we might emulate it that we too might go out, maybe we don't, we're not called to go to India or to China or someplace like that, but that we too might be missionaries, each in our own context, to bring this good news of eternal life and the remission of sins, of, of the forgiveness of all those things and the healing of our souls, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is so needed in this broken world. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always now and ever and into ages of ages.